Welcome to session five. I hope your group has been um, just a super encouragement in your life. And it's hard to believe that, you know, five sessions are gone already. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dave, you're going to tell us about what's coming in just a minute. But maybe before you do, mm -hmm. uh, I think something that is really important in groups is they're called life groups. Well, life doesn't just happen, you know, a handful of people sitting in a living room or maybe in an office someplace mm -hmm. or, or to work. Um, life happens mm -hmm. beyond this group. And uh, any thoughts about how we can take what we're learning and actually help and love other people? Because when I've gone out and done that with others, really the connection in the group just really takes it to a new yeah. level. Yeah, in fact, I, I agree. I've seen that. You go on a mission trip with some friends, yeah. you're lifelong bonded because yeah. you're going to help others, but also you go through crisis. As, as we think about what God's called us to as a mm. church, it's not just getting together mm. and growing. That's an important part and that's good, but it's so that we can impact the world and grow God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. And so as a church, we're committed Amen. to reaching the Bay Area and the world. Uh, obviously, we're not gonna do it all ourselves, but we're partnering with many others and we wanna make an impact in the world with the gospel. So our encouragement is as a group, find some things that you can do. And on the website, our outreach team has listed a number of different projects, both serving at Venture, serving in the Bay Area, mm -hmm. and serving around the world on short-term missions and things like that. So if you would go to venture.cc slash serve, you'll find these different categories and a list of some ways to get involved. And it may be right there in your neighborhood. Yeah. You may serve some folks that are close by, uh, or it could be across town or jumping into one of the projects or partner ministries that we already have. So my encouragement is to serve. I, I just to, to interrupt you here, but uh, mm -hmm. there was a, a group recently and they did this little exercise, you know, they kind of went on the website and it didn't quite resonate. And they just went around and said, everyone in the group mm -hmm. share one person or one situation that someone's hurting that mm -hmm. you know, Yeah, could be a neighbor, someone at work. Mm -hmm. and, and then they said, well, who all would we like to? And they came together and decided which mm, one of those people great. they would do. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of got birthed right out of the group. It was really exciting mm. what they did for, um, you know, this single mom with mm. no money, uh, hurting kids and no car. Wow. And she wasn't a follower of Christ. And all she could say is, what's with you people? You know, <laughs> it's really neat. Huh. That's great. So take the initiative, figure out and do something for God's kingdom and for some folks that live nearby. So let me just tell you what's next as we're wrapping up this series on I Choose Peace. Starting next week, we're gonna be doing a five-week series on living generously. Yeah, can't wait. And we have curriculum to go with it for the life groups. Mm -hmm. And our hope is that you'll continue on in that and discover kind of a new perspective yeah. about what it means to live a generous life. Our heavenly father was generous. He mm -hmm. gave, he gave Jesus mm -hmm. and we are to be like him. So I hope you're looking forward to that. Have a great group time together. Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out for Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid again and again when I was in need. Not that I am looking for a gift, but I am looking for what may be credited to your account. I have received full payment and even more. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent. They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Welcome to session five. And I just wanna say, hey, congratulations. It's great to do this study together. And we're gonna talk about choosing peace in times of financial uh, uncertainty. And we certainly are living in a world of financial uncertainty. I'm not sure if there's any topic, if you just start thinking about it, that can cause anxiety and you to lose your peace, then start thinking about money. And then tie money into things like, wow, am I gonna have enough to retire? Or am I gonna have enough to pay my school loans? Or are we gonna have enough to pay the mortgage? Or wow, at this current job, if I keep working like this, just money begins to eat at us. Or, you know, for many of us as believers, God has taught us and we want to be generous. I mean, the context of what you just read, 
I mean, this is an amazing thank you letter where Paul, this little poor church in Philippi, is they, they're the first and really only church so far. They're supporting him financially so the gospel can go all around the world and they're sending it to Rome and they send it through this brother, Epaphroditus. And so this really is a response that, hey, thanks for sharing my troubles. I appreciate all that you've done. And then he tells him, you know, you're the only one that did it. And then he cites that church in Thessalonica, so it was even when I was there, you know, I mean, that was kind of a rich city and you're a poor city and just to think that you all did this with me. But, but then he, he says to them that, I know you're uptight, here's the context. This group of people gave sacrificially and when they gave sacrificially, they had the same thought that you and I have. Um, is God gonna take care of me? Is God really gonna provide? And so he talks about money, and I love the way the Bible talks about money because the way the Bible talks about money and finances is so different than 90% of all the stuff you hear on TV. I mean, when the Bible talks about money, it talks about heart and, and relationship. And in fact, he, he does this accounting you know, deal where he talks to them and goes, your actual gift to me, you're, you're getting these credits that there really is reward and in heaven. and." When you gave, it was like a fragrant aroma that you brought joy to God and, and, and people's lives are being changed for eternity. And then after he goes through all that, then he gives them that promise that a lot of us have really clung to when the Lord has tapped us on the shoulder and said, you know, um, yes, I, I want you to trust me and give of your time. I want you to trust me and, and spend time in my word. I want you to trust me and, 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 and spend time with your neighbor. I want you to trust me and, and begin by giving me the, the first 10% of your income. And, and then for some of us, as he's blessed us, I want you to begin to proportionally give of your time and your finances well beyond any minimum. And every time you take that step, there's sort of this fear like, what's gonna happen? And he gives them this promise, my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And um, you know, cultivating a heart of compassion, we talked about that by putting others' needs ahead of our wants. Uh, cultivating a, a spirit of generosity by kind of declaring war on the thing that chokes out the love in our heart. We all have some greed and materialism, especially where we live. But what I love is the heart of this passage is not a God that's down on us, it's a God that wants to liberate us and, and the joy that happens when we're generous. In fact, that's one of the reasons, I think it's a delicate topic. And um, Brad is a guy that I met um, a few years ago and he just had this amazing story. I mean, just a regular guy that sort of captured this generosity bug and, and not generosity about money. It was like generosity. And, and as I got around him and then I started watching these little videos that, that he started to make, it was like, there's such joy when we realize, wow, we can share our life. And as we share it, God takes care of us. And so uh, I hope you really enjoyed uh, the, the story that he shared. And here's the question I'd like to ask you is, of that story, as you heard him talk, and, and then pretty amazing, you know, his son gave kind of a little five minute thought, what, what most inspired you? I, I mean, just let's just around the room, let's just lean back and say, wow, I haven't thought about it that way. What most inspired you? And then after you do that, you can go through the questions, encourage you to pray. And as we wrap this up, I just wanna, you know, join hands with Pastor Dave and, and say, what a great opportunity for you all to not just think about generosity, but say, who are some people in our relational network that we could help? I mean, who, who, who needs some love? And maybe it's just your time. Maybe it's like one family that they cleaned up a guy's yard, or maybe there's a single mom. Maybe it's someone at work. I don't know what it is, but wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great as you, as a life group would say, hey, let, let's help someone. Let's be generous, Let, let's come up with a plan. And I mean, let's not, let's not make it some big deal. Let's come up with a plan and in the next two, three weeks max, let's just go help some people. And uh, I think you're gonna find something really amazing happens in your heart and something really exciting in the dynamic of your friendships and your groups. Thanks for being with us. Um, know that in any circumstance, any anxiety, uh, any struggle, anything in your life, 
you can, by faith, choose peace. God has it available, and he wants you and me to experience it. God bless you. Keep pressing ahead.